Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at The Amazing Spider-Man 300 Facsimile Edition, which also happens to be the special 25th anniversary issue. Um, the early appearance of Venom, one of the most iconic covers in Spider-Man, Todd McFarlane history, beautifully drawn by Todd McFarlane. I just reread this and was reminded of how much I love this era of Spider-Man. So that is what we are looking at today. Cannot wait to share it with you guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. So iconic, so amazing, so magical, um, and so homaged, right? You've seen this cover done a million times. Um, is it this one or is it the other one? Well, I mean, there's a couple of Spider-Man covers by McFarlane that have been, you know, like copied, like to the nth degree. But this is such a great one. We have the spaghetti webbing intact, which a lot of people credit uh, McFarlane for, but you can see it as early as like, I think 1978 and Michael Golden's uh, like big Marvel poster. And it might've even been done by somebody else. Uh, but he popularized the big eyes and the uh, spaghetti webbing. I think those are definitely hallmarks of the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man era. Venom, gorgeous splash page. You know, the artist edition of um, Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man is out from IDW. I covered that not too long ago, and the art is sublime. David Michelini, Todd McFarlane writer. I He is like my Spider-Man writer. Like, rereading this, like, this is the voice of Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Mary Jane, like, everybody that I love. Todd McFarlane art, Rick Parker, letters, such a great uh, addition to the team here. Bob Sharon, color. Jim Salakrup, editor. And Tom DeFelco, editor-in-chief. So this is after um, Shooter has left the building. Well, I guess so. Like, when was this originally um, done? I guess, like, very close to the 90s, right? Um, so anyway, it's, uh, you know, MJ has just had this confrontation with uh, Venom, He, which scared the bejesus out of her. And she's like cowering in the corner, just shaken, shook, afraid. And Peter comes home and, you know, looking like Venom. And um, she's terrified all over again. Such great storytelling here. I love the reflection of his eyes and her eyeball. Like, this is like such pinnacle McFarlane. Isn't no wonder, like, McFarlane was on fire. You know what I mean? I kind of discovered him on Infinity Inc. Um, over at DC where he's doing like really imaginative page layouts and his art was just growing and developing and becoming more detailed literally if not month to month page to page and you know he just really hit such a high point by the time you know he moved to Marvel um, went to Hulk and just like continued to evolve and then just got so popular I mean that Hulk Wolverine cover right everyone I mean I have that poster everyone knows that image um very iconic, like his whole run. Uh, Eddie Brock, so great, like such a great revenge tale here. Like it's, the story of Venom is actually very cool and it speaks very well to like the writing of David Michelini. I just love it. Photo stat panel of the outside of their apartment, kind of interesting there. Um, or no, is that the, I'm sorry, the Leiden House Hotel. I think there is another, he does the photo stat thing a couple of times, which is funny because this is like a double issue and um, he's penciling and inking. So um, he must be pretty fast. He must have been like pretty quick at the time, but you know, you still do need a few things like that, you know, photo stats rather than drawing the whole cityscape, which if you've seen uh, Todd draw Spider-Man swinging through the city, you know, he's more than capable of doing a cityscape. Um, I also appreciated Todd's effort to sort of make Mary Jane beautiful because she is supposed to be a supermodel. So he like really always tried to glam up her hair and her, you know, clothes and things like that. And he did draw such a handsome Spider-Man, which I feel is like, in a way, uh, a testament and a tribute to the legacy of John Romita. Because, you know, John Romita took over Spider-Man from um, Steve Ditko and really feared that. But... Um, uh, you know, uh, because he wasn't so much about the superheroes and who can deny the greatness that John Romita Sr. brought to Spider-Man and later John Romita Jr., of course. It's funny, looking at this, though, I, f I can't help but feel McFarlane is almost like this great, not completely aesthetically, but just like spiritually in a way, like a great marriage of Romita and 
Ditko because he's bringing the quirkiness, um, the kookiness of Ditko with the aesthetic of Ramita in a way that Peter is very good looking, MJ is beautiful, just certain things like that. I love this. This is like, this is like an argument for the shared universe of the Marvel universe. Like it's so much fun. Like um, Spidey knows he's gonna have to battle Venom later which he, he doesn't know as Venom at this point. He knows as his like disgruntled alien symbiote suit that tried to bond with him permanently. You with me, people? Anyway, so this is the sonic gun that he's going to use. And he had to swing by, literally, the uh, Four Freedoms Plaza, the current headquarters of the Fantastic Four, to borrow this contraption. Love this little touch here. And this is just like w an example of Anyone who's a Peter Parker fan, anyone who's a Spider-Man fan, anyone who like grew up reading Spider-Man and just loves the character, the book, knows the whole mythos, this message on the answering machine from Aunt May is everything. Hi kids, this is Aunt May, I'm just going to remind you about dinner tonight, chicken and dumplings at 7pm, short, I, I mean sharp, oh fooey, I hate these contraptions, click, hilarious, right? So good, I love it. Like, um, yeah, you can definitely see like certain tricks uh, being taken to, you know, sort of shorthand the art, like the silhouette here. But I love it at the same time, like the detail here is like incredible. I always thought, um, and we'll see some nods to Art Adams in here a little bit, because I think the Web of Spider-Man Annual 2, which is sublime, illustrated by uh, Art Adams and very much like he, Art Adams of course mastered Spider-Man in the black costume and um, I feel like McFarlane's channeling that a little bit here um, and I have proof coming up. So this is them checking out the new apartment that they're going to move into uh, that Mary Jane can afford as a high fashion supermodel. I never really liked the, that aspect of it. Like, it just seemed too much. You know what I mean? It's like, really, you, you the girl next door in Queens goes on to become a big fashion model and you're a superhero. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It just, I don't know. First of all, I don't know what my problem is with it, but I have a problem with it. Like, you know, I like Peter best not married, to be honest with you. Like, at the time, like, I loved them together. Like, I enjoyed all these stories. I didn't have a problem with it. But I think in the overall big picture, it works better if he's not married. So he's, but see, this is how they worked in, like, you know, Spidey problems for being married to a supermodel. Oh, I can't afford it because all I do is take pictures of Spider-Man. So you have to pay for our apartment and I feel emasculated. So what's a woman to do but drop her blouse to the floor? I know how to handle it. I don't know what kind of message this is sending, but this is, you know, what, 30 years ago, I guess. So she drops her blouse and then... <laughs> <laughs> I love this caption here, David McElhinney. Slowly, Peter's spirits begin to rise. Yeah, I bet his spirits aren't the only thing that are rising. Anyway, so, and right after they do it, it's time for dinner at Aunt May's house with Nathan Lubunsky, that ne'er-do-well, talking his chitter-chatter to these young whippersnappers. And, um... May's like saying she's distancing herself from the family or from Peter and MJ because they're newlyweds and she doesn't want to destroy their marriage by being a nosy relative. And MJ is like, no sister, forget it. We can't live without your wheat cakes. And then Aunt May is like, groovy. So then we have this weirdo. Like, I love that religion's tied into it. Bodybuilding, religion, disgruntled. I mean, what more could you ask for? I mean, I was also, I know it's perverse, but um, thinking about, because clearly, like, so the alien's supposed to be alive and like the symbiote and just like crawling all over your naked body. It's kind of like a weird thing, right? Okay. Anyway, I, I, I can only imagine how slimy and weird Venom must feel, um, you know, encasing you for a costume. So Sonics, Hooked on Sonics is what's going to freaking be the end of this. I thought this was weird, too. It's like, I mean, he's a bad guy, so his mind is, you know, mush and altered and stuff. But, like, couldn't he have subdued this officer? Like, he had to full on kill him. And he's like, unnecessary but unfortunate sacrifice. Like, whatever. 
Anyway, so this is them moving and they list the help of their friends. I love this because I don't know if this is supposed to be. Oh, it, I think this is, is this supposed to be the guy from uh, Doom Patrol with the weird hair? I don't remember. But anyway, he's commenting on Norman Osborne's weird hair, which always triggered me. Like, what is that hair? I don't get it. But I love that he says that that's a radical hairdo, which it is. And then he and Flash are carrying the mattress. But here's Gumby by Art Adams on Flash's t-shirt, very much in the Art Adams style, because um, he did a one, a two shot for Kamiko. Um, and then there was something else. I feel like there's Easter eggs in here too. Um, and then we have Bambi, Randy, and Candy, Peter's old next door neighbors. And I love these guys are drooling over them and they drop their boxes. like. I don't know. It's like such an eighties movie, like a guy less guys left it lusting after chicks kind of thing. This is fun too. So I also love that Robbie has his pipe in his mouth as he's like carrying his boxes. Like great. Um, just so we know it's Robbie. And then this triggered for a couple of reasons here. First of all, like what is this outfit and why is it colored that way? Like that's horrifying. If she's a true fashion model, I don't get it unless it's a Mondrian painting or something like that. So, and she offers, we're going to build more sandwiches and there's soda in the frickin' refrigerator. Have you never, ever, 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 unless it's someone's help to move, you don't lure them with sandwiches and soda. It's beer and pizza or bust. And I feel like people are beyond that. They're like, here's $100. I don't even want your pizza. Hire a mover. This is fun, too. This is, like, really great choreography and fight scene. I kind of like it because it's, like, who's who? Like, w w they have the same costume, but obviously, you know, Venom has the psychotic grin and the bulkier figure. So it's just a lot of fun. Like, this is such a great era, and, like, this is such a masterful comic book. Like I said, David Michelini just nailed this. This explains the whole situation. And honestly, Spider-Man, like... I don't know, like, a little problematic. You could see why he would want to g exact revenge. I'm not saying it's justified. I'm just saying, like, as it is a gr any great, like, sort of anti-hero, which Venom is arguably an anti-hero in a way, right? I mean, people, he has had his own comics. He's been part of teams, I'm sure. I'm sure he's been on the Avengers or the X-Men at some point. You know, everything's been so whittled down and watered down by this point. I'm sure that's happened. I love this here, too. And this low-key looks exactly almost like Art Adams' version of <laughs> Spider-Man in a weird way. Um, this is fun, too. Like, there's just so much great stuff. And then the, the what um, Ed Piscor refers to as the screen door hatching, which I have to say, that's a great analogy there. Mo you know, I think Art Adams started that. Although, actually, Terry Austin, if you look at the space scenes um, in the X-Men that he inked by John Byrne. You'll see a lot of this action, and I think that's where they all got it from, if I'm being honest. And why wouldn't I? Um, great effects here, too. Like, I, you know, it's, like, funny because McFarlane is kind of one of those, like, very fluid artists. Like, I feel like some artists are just, like, so pristine and so on point and just, like, so, like, concise that... If they draw a head, it's going to look exactly the same every time. And McFarlane feels a little more loose in his interpretations. He definitely, like, feels inspired by exactly what he's drawing at the moment he's drawing, if that makes any sense. I don't know. But it just works so well. And he's just, like, so exciting. And I wish he would return to the drawing board. I don't know what the hell his problem is. I envision a huge uh, Spider-Man graphic novel from a Abrams, uh, written, penciled, and inked by McFarlane, much like they did with the Alex Ross Fantastic Four graphic novel. I think that would be freaking amazing. Um, it's so great, right? And it's so weird, too, because it's like, you're, you can't help but think of, like, Spider-Man 3 with James, or is it James Franco? But, you know, like, the Eddie Brock and the, who played Eddie Brock? Was it? No, it was, uh, you know, that guy from uh, Wings or whatever, I guess. Was it him? I don't know. Hayden Church? I don't know. Um, whatever it was, I'm picturing Spider-Man 3. I'm loving all of this. Loving all the storytelling. Loving the silhouettes. Just 
so much fun, so much goodness. Like these facsimile issues are the best. And I say, I, rare, I rarely pass on them, especially something like this. I'm not gonna say no to this. And it's fun to see it. Like I'm sure when I got it, we were probably dealing with flexographic printing and horrible paper and gray blacks and all that crap. So a lot of people argue they should be on newsprint. I beg to differ. I mean, the t at the point this book was being published, it was probably like on Mando paper or something like that anyway. So um, very cool. And here we go. And this is all also interesting to me because, you know, it's like you can always tell like what era it is. So like the Fantastic Four at Four Freedoms Plaza, the thing is the leader and he looks unfortunately like that like whatever that was I, I i had exited the building on the ff at that point this is post burn i think and like i don't know love felix the cat um todd mcfarlane always worked felix the cat into his spider-man run and so much fun the story behind it in case you want to stick around for 10 more seconds to hear it is that todd was trying to win over um a comic book fan and he's like, I don't like superheroes. I don't like uh, Spider-Man. I like Felix the Cat. So McFarland said, okay, so what if I put Felix the Cat in every single Spider-Man comic book? Would you buy it then? And he said, yes. So there you go. Isn't that crazy? A little crazy. And then, wow, way to end on a big photo stat. But this stands as like one of the most iconic like Spider-Man images. I, this holds up for real. And I just love the way, like the writing is just so good. A lingering kiss, a quick change of clothes, and the legend begins anew. And it all plays out perfectly. It makes perfect sense. Like, you know, as a writer or whatever, they often say the characters sometimes write themselves. And you can't help but think, like, this had a life of its own. Like, it's such a great thing. Stan Soapbox, like, like, totally off the rails. Basically spending half the page rambling about how he was asked to write this piece. And then the rest of the page sort of writing it. Very bizarre. Almost like his entire comics book book run. Anyway, that is that, people. Amazing Spider-Man, number 300, the quasi-debut of Venom. Um, such a great issue, illustrated by Todd McFarlane, one of the best uh, Spider-Man writers, and written by David Michelini, one of my favorite Spider-Man writers. Thanks for watching, guys. Pick this up if you see it. Totally worth it. Uh, hit like, subscribe, all that jazz. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.